Thank you. Thanks a lot, Mohamed. First of all, thank you very much for your invitation. It's a real pleasure to be part of this event and a warm greetings to all the colleagues and the audience. I would like, first of all, to present our office, way of working, our philosophy. Then I will make a short presentation about Moroccan architecture and then show you some projects which illustrate, I think, our vision of architecture. I started my own office in Casablanca in 2005 after some trips and collaboration. And with my friends and colleagues, Saad Abdelbaj and Mohamed Amin Siana, we decided to have at the same time a shared office. The idea was to have a flexible structure where each one could develop his own projects and having at the same time the possibility to work together on important commissions and competitions. Our formula of working, while being slower than a classic big firm, let's say, allows us to have a critical debate on each project and to evacuate the most possible all weakness and artifice by keeping the essence of the idea. It also allows us to mix a sensitive approach with a rational argumentation, the three of us involving with our personal sensitivity and logical reflection. We are a small office working in a handicraft way, and I think we find ourselves in a convergent architectural philosophy. We share the same aiming to reach to American modernity, connected to the culture, to context, and we believe this need of contextuality isn't a restraint to a modern and contemporary architecture, but on the contrary, a powerful chance and aspiration, especially at those times of globalization and loss of references. We believe in architecture as a great way to enrich people's lives and soul in harmony with natural forces, and we do understand architecture as a continuum dealing with different forces, but finding its own power in these contradictions. We finally believe that architecture should emphasize reason, geometry, rigor, and at the same time, should sound deeply poetic and let's say it artistic. Well, um, before introducing our first project and maybe other ones if I had enough time, uh, I would like to make you a brief presentation about Moroccan architecture to, to allow the audience to, to know uh, better about our country and also to illustrate our architectural process and thinking. Before the French protectorate period in the beginning of the 20th century, we can talk generally about traditional architecture we can find in the old traditional cities, the Medinas. This architecture and urban principles related to the different dynasties that follow through history is deeply linked to the way of life and to the social structures. The main imperial cities are Fez, Marrakesh, Meknes, Rabat, and we can list these key principles. The organic urban scheme and the streets pattern. Uh, and some studies show that in this apparent disorder were in fact a very elaborate logic that can be related to a kind of natural growth, a seeking for efficiency and the respect of, of some rules and principles. The importance of the inner space, with the example of the courtyard house, of course, the importance of privacy, the importance of neighborhood, the variable scales, the focal points as the mosque, the medersa, which has the uh, theological schools, the gates, the piazzas, the notion of abstraction, geometry, the inside richness and exterior sobriety, and the absence of the architect as we understand it today, as we have, we had at the time what we call the malas, which were kind of architects. And maybe also a kind of evidence and known and accepted rules that were transmitted through the generations. So you can see the beautiful Medina Fez, which is my native city. You can feel this organic pattern I was talking about. So the plan, it's like really a natural body with all the streets, the, you know, the the focal points I, I was talking about, like the Karawil Mosque, which is the one of the oldest universities 
in the world, the, the Moulay Dries and the other uh, well-known medersas. One of my preferred medersas, Medersa Seherij, which is a small medersa in, in Fez, built in the 14th century, but one of the most beautiful with uh, very elaborate decorations, zelish, stuck, woodwork, and so on. Another very well-known medersa, the Bu'anania medersa, which is uh, larger, beautiful, very serene ambience on the inside, and which is visited by many, many tourists. Uh, just to illustrate also another one in Marrakesh, the Medersa Ben Youssef, beautiful one also. So, of course, all the work of the calligraphy, the zelige, which is the traditional tiles, ceramic tiles, the stock, the plaster, and all the conversions of this aesthetics, this artwork in the wall of architecture. So, it comes from the wall scheme to the very small detail and very small decorations. And it's, it's something really philosophical, really beautiful. The gates I was talking about, the Babouj in Fez, which is a famous gate, which mark, marks one of the entrance of the cities. The very uh, playful streets, very animated with the light protections, all the light, all of these light effects, a lot of shops, a lot of life, a lot of people. And then step by step, you, you go to, to something more intimate, to the small streets, the narrow streets. And I have the inner space, the house, the cultural house, which is a serene place, which allow, allows people to to go from something very uh, joyful, very, very noisy, very animated, to something very serene, very calm, very, I mean, almost meditative, which is something you really feel in the, when you are in the Medina. Um, another important expression is the architecture of the Deep South region, which is a kind of architecture I love a lot. And, has a strong uh, influence on our work, which is characterized by uh, the Atlas Mountains, the desert landscape, the Kasba, the source, which are uh, like fortifications, built fortifications, the small traditional towns on the hills. You, when you go to the south of Morocco by car, you can see all these small towns on the hill, really well integrated, really beautiful. Uh, it's usually an earthen architecture, sometimes in snow, in stone, sorry, with a great plastic power, combining abstraction, geometry, a sense of integration and sustainability even before the world was created, because it's something very sustainable, built with um, local materials, very efficient in terms of uh, thermal control, and I mean very well integrated to the to the context. So it's something that that you feel emerge from the ground. Uh, so this is a picture of Al Rashidia, which is a small city in the south of Morocco. And this is the small towns I was, uh, I was talking about. The Qasba, beautiful Qasba, with the background of the mountains. One of the most famous, the Qasba is Ben Haddou, which is listed in the UNESCO heritage list. Another image of this casba. The contrast, the clair obscure, what we call in French the clair obscure, the earth architecture, and um, the, the very light and clear interiors always is a feature you always find, which is beautiful. Uh, exterior very strong, very dark, very austere, and the interior always white, very light, with the good size of the openings and you, you can have a beautiful ambience on the inside. Um, uh, it's an architecture that also reflects the way of life because it's the direct, I mean, consequence of the, life, of the way of life of people, the way they live, the way they move, the way they, they manage to, 
the agriculture uh, products, uh, their personality also, because people there are quite straight, austere, very, very strong and uh, straight people. And we have also the desert architecture, the ephemeral, because we had a lot of nomads, maybe less now, but it's also a very specific kind of architecture we can find in the, in the deep south of Morocco. And great architects and great artists were inspired by, by this uh, southern architecture in Morocco. I can quote uh, Yudzan, Balagan, of course, we, which uh, quoted the, the Moroccan architecture as one of his biggest influences in his uh, Pritzker Pride acceptance speech. Uh, famous painters also, like Henri Matisse, Majorel. And then we can move to the modern era, um, which starts so from the beginning of the Protectorate, in the uh, beginning of the 20th century, um, to the 50s, the 60s, and even the 70s. Uh, we can have at the beginning a uh, neo Moorish style, which were done by French architects, but, but with a very Moorish uh, uh, architectural vocabulary. Then, um, an Art Deco architecture in the 30s with architects like uh, Marius Boyer. Uh, we can talk also about the urban exper experimentation, especially in Casablanca, as some, some ideas were, um, I mean, uh, tested even before Europe. So, so when you, you visit the downtown Casablanca, it's something very modern for, for, for its time. And still now we have very beautiful uh, Art Deco building, which are, uh, which are uh, liked by the tourists, of course, and now by the locals, because we have a lot of associations now we, which try to, to protect this heritage. Uh, this is the Habus area, which is another kind of architecture made by French architects, which was a kind of interpretation of the traditional Medina. For example, this beautiful courtyard, very traditional, beautifully decorated, was uh, built by a French architect. The Art Deco architecture, with this uh, beautiful building on the Mohammed V uh, Boulevard in uh, Casablanca, in the modern uh, area. Uh, the architecture of the 50s, which starts to become more pure, uh, more modern, let's say, with the clean lines, horizontal lines, the freshness, the white, related to the name of the city, Casablanca, the, the curves, the smooth curves. So it's very, something very specific to Casablanca. Uh, another building, uh, Imable, uh, the building Place Paquet, uh, in the same area. Uh, then, um, a fresh modernity, let's say, in the crosswords of Corbusian influence and local specificity, what we can relate to the regional modernism, to the critical regionalism, uh, modernism, as uh, quoted by Kenneth Frampton. And with the, uh, I mean, a beautiful generation of architects, pioneers of uh, Moroccan architecture, which were really modern and really Moroccan at the same time. Uh, so this is, for example, as a house, own house, beautiful example of uh, brutalism. Uh, all these kind of experimentations, which try to to reinterpret the courtyard, the terrace, the inner space in a very modern way. So this is the the Semiramis building in Casablanca, also by the I think Candeli, the architect, and Woods. This beautiful scheme also by André Studer, which is the CD Hotman housing. And uh, what, is, what is quite strange is that, is that all this, I mean, this spacious, this courtyard have, have been closed. So it's strange because maybe it was too soon for this time. Uh, what we can call the Hollywoodian modernism, something very exuberant, beautiful, with this house, very famous house by uh, Wolfgang Evert. 
and last but not least, the, one of the great masters of Moroccan architecture, uh, Jean-François Evaco, uh, with this quite futuristic building, which were an orphanage in the 60s, and we can maybe find some even Zaha Hadid's style even before, before her time, the late uh, Zaha Hadid. Um, starting from the 80s, we had Diff quite difficult times with the postmodernist influence, uh, a will for identity with the reproduction of traditional forms and patterns, but unfortunately, often without the spirit behind of them. Great urban issues, uh, cities, expansion, the rural exodus, of course, uh, social tensions. So it was the 80s, the 90s were quite difficult times, but still. Uh, we try to have a new generation, new researches. Uh, now we face all these sustainability issues, uh, the, the, the issue of context and globalization, how to find the right place, um, how to be, to really, yes, how to find the right answer to our uh, specificity. So this is the last work from Zevaco. And before presenting our project, uh, it will be the Terodont University, our first built project. And if I have time, maybe one or two others. I would like just to say a word of uh, great masters that uh, have inspired us, a vision of architecture which is human, which is related again to its context, which has a soul in my opinion, and is completely modern and avant-garde at the same time. So uh, the house that Jorn Hudson built for himself in Mallorca, which is a beautiful combination of a very avant-garde work, very modern and something very vernacular because he used all the traditional techniques that he found on the site. So the stone, the specific uh, sailing, the work, the work with the light, so it's, I had the chance to visit this house, really, really beautiful, really poetic. Uh, the church in Bags Vareld by the same architect, Hudson, really poetic, beautiful, play with the light, with the ceiling. The king of houses, where you can find um, the strong influence of the traditional, um, let's say, Arab, Arabo Muslim scheme of the house with the courtyard, the organic pattern also. Uh, beautiful hotel in Morocco by Farawi and Domazia, which were great architects in the 70s, 80s also. Baragan, of course, uh, great influence. Even Yemir which, Yemir, which is maybe more spectacular, more modern, but were really influenced by the tradition as for instance, this Alvorada Palace were uh, find, found find it, its roots in a very famous traditional fazenda in Brazil, which has the same colonnade, the same system of veranda. So just to say that there is no break, it should, we should not have a break between tradition and modernity, but you have to find this continuity, this beautiful line, and we, are, again, we can be completely modern, completely avant-garde, and completely related to, to the place we belong to. Sorry. Yeah? Yeah, we have about uh, 10 minutes plus. Um, okay. Alvaro, of course, Svelfen, okay. all these are references for us. Jose Luis Set, the beautiful, uh, make foundation. So all these, I wanted to talk about this because it's a kind of path that led us to what we do now. Of course, with our sensitivity and our personal thoughts, our convictions, but all what I talked about was kind of a part of the path that we follow maybe for 15 years now. And that led us to what we are doing now with this project. So this was our first project the Tarodant University, uh, by chance an open competition 
in 2006 because we just started our office at the time. And for this spe specific competition, they didn't ask for, uh, for uh, I mean, references. So we were able, able to do it. Uh, so Terradent, an, an historic town with a strong cultural identity, uh, especially with the great scholars in theology linked to the main region of Agadir. And this project was also the occasion to reduce the pressure on the other towns and to allow the, for all the small girls to, to be able to study. And it's a beautiful region with the mountains, with the, the world, the traditional walls that surround the city, with a very specific tree, the organ tree. And uh, all this was quite a kind of inspiration for us. The site on the north of the city, three kilometers away, with a beautiful uh, view on the mountains, north-south north site, which is very good for teaching spaces. And uh, we arrive at this scheme, which is, let's say, a combination of the Riyadh scheme, which is uh, an axis, a longitudinal axis, where you can place spaces or buildings and the Casbah, which is the playful work with the volumes. So these were our main references. Uh, uh, also with the, the need for, to have the uh, passive solutions, to have all the buildings be orientated, be uh, ventilated uh, with the natural light coming from both sides to be completely open to the north and south because it's the good orientation to be completely close to the west and east and to have a logic in the in the i mean in the in placing all the functions and to have this beautiful riyadh which is really the, like the spin of the project which allow allows to have a wall lecture of, of the all the project and allow to have um, small scales, intimate spaces. So again, this is very important. The wall vision of the project, you can feel it by this uh, great Riyadh, this great axis and, and the specific places, the small gardens, the patios. And this is something we can find, as I said before, in the Medinas, uh, you, you really have all the scales you can play with. We, were, we had also a uh, very uh, need to be very uh, I mean, efficient in kind of construction of structure because it's seismic region. So the structure has had to be very clean, very strong, um, even to allow to the construction workers to, to work well because it's not always uh, easy to have a good construction. So the more the project is simple, clear, the best you, result you can have. So you can see the, I mean, the amphitheaters, uh, you can see the, the classrooms on the right side, uh, the administration, the, the teaching uh, offices on the, on the west side, looking at the beautiful view on the mountains, and then the, the library, which has the best view in the project, of course, on the north side. And all of this triad uh, being punctuated by uh, the stairs. We work a lot on the stairs to have a sense of scale, to have a sense of punctuations, and even the small places that give li gives lives to, do, to this triad. So this is the classrooms we can see uh, with the, the east and west side completely closed, as I said. You can see the very strong volumes, the upper volumes the stairs that punctuate the Riyadh and in the, in the back, the, the library. And also the, the pathways on the I mean, ground floor and first floor that uh, give a kind of dynamic as you see people going, uh, you see the students on the first floor, on the ground floor, and it gives a kind of life to the project. So this is the same classroom with the frontal view Another very important thing for us was to have very limited uh, palette of materials because of economic constraints, but also to, to gain the maximum of abstraction and homogeneity. Because when you have only three or four materials, you really have a sense of, I mean, homogeneity and uh, something uh, which sounds very clear. So 
we build with very few materials, the, the concrete, I mean, the, the ochre tone, some glass, um, some very punctuated steel elements, and that's it. And all the work were done inside. I mean, even the benches you can see were uh, fabricated on the site, something very artisanal and uh, traditional. So to send you on the classes, you can see the benches I was talking about, another view of the Riyadh. And for the, I mean, for the greenery, we try to have something more organic, more curvy, uh, smoother, to, to, to ha have a beautiful contrast with the geometry and the rigor of the, the volumes. So another view of the same classrooms with the protections on the south. Of course, there were, um, big work on the, all the sun shades to be protected on the south side, to be widely open on the north, and to be closed on, again on the west and the east. And it's something that works very well. And we have no air conditioning in this project, except for some offices in the administrative staff. And with the years, we asked them and it works well. So it, this is what we can call passive solutions even with the green, the greenery, which extended because the picture were there, were taken very soon. So even the greenery helps to reduce the, the I mean, the sun, because uh, sometimes it can be very, very hot. So the stairs inside the classrooms, you can see the, what I was talking about, the, I mean, the, the scales, the small gardens related to the big real, which is really the, the part where you can see the wall project, the volume combinations on the back, the abstraction, because it's something that were really impressed us when we visited the Casbah on the south. It's something like a, it's like a painting. It's very abstract, very strong. You have this clear obscure, which is fantastic. Even with the, the light, the sun, which is quite spectacular. It, it's something I think we have, you have to play with. You have, and it adds a kind of uh, theatrality, a kind of abstraction, a kind of uh, austerity that suits well, I think, this kind of spaces of teaching because it's not a commercial center, it's not a cinema, it's something that has to, to sound uh, deep for me. This is a library. So few openings on the south because it was the, the book part, um, the, some gaps between the volumes to allow the, the light to enter, and this combination of volumes, which is, uh, again, which is uh, related to, to all what we, we've seen before, the casbahs and the fortifications. The same libraries, library, the entrance, trying to enhance the entrance to have a kind of, uh, again, theatrality the same library, the north part, which is widely open with the, the, the view on the mountains, all the play with the sun protections. For instance, this is an amphitheater. So we imagine uh, this kind of uh, protection in L shape. Uh, the, the only part which is not ochre is the main entrance. We, we used a uh, local stone, cream stone, to, to have a specific uh, difference from the other elements. So the entrance, you can see all the Riyadh, the Riyadh at night, all the pathways, because it, it was something very important for us. Um, the, the parkour, the parkour, the way to move, the way to add life to the project, the need to protect also all the sunshades, which were a pretext for us to play with the architecture. And as I said before, all the interiors really white, really simple. Uh, and with few openings, you can have a beautiful light ambience. The patios in the administration part. Again, the, the administrative entrance with these very fine, fine slots. The opening on the sky, you can see the beautiful contrast. The stairs, as I said, which give a, a sense of punctuation, of scale in the Riyadh, and maybe that uh, also recall the fortifications, the, 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 the strong walls of Tarudant and Marrakesh, for example. 
And just before finishing, uh, four or five images, if uh, you allow me. Uh, this is the, after this project, we done another project with the same client and we, we continue on our research in the same field, but in a small scale. So this was the Gelmin School of Technology. Again, uh, an axis combination of, um, with the volumes along an axis, but with more playful articulations, spatials, uh, courtyards. And this is what we can see now here, the covered pathway, the south protections you can see on the building on the right. And all, again, the play with the stairs, which is something we really like a lot. And uh, two or three images for our last project we just completed in Rabat, which is comp something completely different and with the same values at the same time, because Rabat has a strong tradition of modernist schools and we try to make something in the continuity of these modernist schools with the simple lines we, we like, the clean lines, the strong volumes, the nice articulation of the volumes, and again, the, 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 the need to be related to the city we belong, which is in this case Rabat. So this is this project you can see, it's a very famous avenue in Rabat, the Mehdi Ben Barka Avenue. So this is a Jacques Chirac school, which uh, we just completed. You can see we have a beautiful linear uh, facade. I mean, maybe uh, 150 meters, so all the, the the thing was to deal with this facade and to, to, to play with the high density project because it's really high density project. So you can see the courtyard, the, the, I mean the playground, the use of this traditional village, uh, which uh, gives a freshness. And they told us that the pupils and even the, all the people in the project likes about this project, this uh, village, which adds, uh, I mean, the playful touch and the uh, freshness. Thank you very much. Thank you a lot, Architect Dries. Uh, we will have uh, one question the, because we have very short time now. This is from Dr. Hisham. What is the relation between what relationship between uh, the design of the library and the university and the knowledge of the city? The knowledge of the city? Yes. I mean, you you talk about the scholars of the city? Yes. Yeah, unfortunately, you know, in, in, in one time, maybe, I don't know, uh, 50 years ago, maybe one century ago, it was a very famous city with the theological scholars. I think that it's something that we can find less for many reasons. But since this project, among others, they try to make uh, for this city, and uh, this city, a new departure of, uh, I mean, of teaching, of, to have a lot of schools, to have universities, and it's something very positive because even in this area, you can find today a lot of buildings, something that uh, added a new, if you want, development to to this uh, to this city. But we can say that it was a city that was quite sleepy for a long time. If you see what I mean, so. Uh. So maybe, I, I hope, because this project is now 10 years, it will help to, to I mean, revive this uh, uh, school, scholar tradition in the city. Yes, very clear. Okay. Thank you a lot, Architect Adris, again. And uh, it was a pleasure having you with us. Thank you. Thank you.